What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how we can add doors and windows to our model in SketchUp Free. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so we're gonna use our floor plan that we modeled last week, but this week we're gonna add doors and windows to it. And so this is something that can take a fair amount of time, but if you're smart about the way you can create it, you can save a ton of time just by re reusing models and things like that. Now, remember, the first thing we've done is we've gone through and we've modeled out our floor plan with grouped walls, right? This keeps all of the geometry from merging in on itself. Well, now what we want to do is we want to add our doors and windows, but make sure that you've grouped your walls first. And so the way that we want to add a window is I'm going to make these kind of horizontal sliding windows. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a very simple exterior frame. And so to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by tapping the R key on my keyboard and then mousing over one of these corners. Notice how when I mouse over these corners, it kind of inferences to the face direction um, that's in here. If for whatever reason it doesn't do that, you can also tap the right arrow key with the rectangle tool active in order to draw a rectangle. But we're just gonna click on one corner, move our mouse up, we're gonna click on the other corner right here. Now, what we wanna do is we wanna offset this in. So to do that, we're gonna tap the F key on our keyboard. That's gonna activate the offset tool, which is gonna allow us to offset this in. So now we're gonna mouse over this face, single click and move our mouse. And in this case, remember that we've single clicked, we haven't clicked and dragged, so we can type in a value of two and hit the enter key. That's gonna give us a two inch window frame which I think is gonna be enough for this video. Now, what I like to do in a situation like this now is I need to give my frame thickness, right? There's no thickness on this right now. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna left click on this face right here. And uh, you can tap the space key in order to go back to the select tool in order to be able to select this easily. But we're just gonna hit the delete key to delete this out. Well, now what I wanna do is I want to extrude this face back to the back side of my wall. And um, in this case, we're just gonna assume this has a thickness of your full wall. Um, in reality, some window frames probably aren't six inches thick, but for this uh, exercise, we're just gonna tap the P key, mouse over this face, and we're gonna single click. We're gonna move our mouse until it aligns with the back side of the wall. And so it's easier if you move to the back side so you can see this, but the other thing you can do is you can also tap the P key and single click. And remember that because we've single clicked, we can move our mouse and we can actually find the back of the wall by mousing over the top of the uh, back side of the wall over here as well. Um, because this just extrudes in a straight line from where our face is, it doesn't really matter where you inference to as long as it has the proper thickness right here. But now, we have our window frame. And so for our window frame, we want to hit the space key in order to activate the select tool. And we're just gonna single click, or we're gonna click and drag around the outside of this in order to select it. And in this situation, what I wanna do is I wanna right click on this and I wanna make it a group. So now I have my wall in a group and I have my window frame in a group. And so for our frame, we know that a window frame is going to be made up of um, a slider on one side and a slider on the other. So in this situation, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start on the back side of this face and I'm just gonna single click with the rectangle tool. And what you might do is you might orbit by clicking and holding your middle mouse button to the back side. We're just gonna move our mouse up and we're gonna find the midpoint on the back side, right? So now we have um, this window slider right here. And so in this situation, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna use the offset tool. So I'm gonna hit space to activate the select tool. That just um, turns off the tool that I currently have selected. But then I'm gonna tap the F key, move my mouse over the back face and single click, and I'm gonna offset this in by one inch right here. And then I'm gonna delete out the middle face. Well, now what I wanna do is I wanna give this a little bit of thickness, but I don't want this to have a slider that's three inches thick, right? That's gonna look a little bit weird, right? If we make it this thick. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm going to double click on this face right here. That's going to select the face and the connected geometry. I'm gonna tap the M key and I'm gonna move this to the midpoint right here. So now this is at the midpoint. Well, what I can do is I can just push pull this to an inch. So I'm just gonna type in a value of one inch right here. And we're gonna sit that inside of our window. Now, 
One thing that we're going to want to do here, though, is this is something that's going to happen over and over again in our model, right? The slider is going to be a component or a part of the window um, that is going to be repeated. So what I want to do with this frame is I want to click and drag a box across of it or across it, and I'm going to right click and I'm going to select the option for make component. And we'll just call this window slider right here. I will click the option for create. And so now what that means is that means that when I make a copy of this, because we're going to use two of them, right? So I'm going to use the move tool in copy mode. So I'm going to tap the M key and I'm going to, in this case, you can actually mouse over this and see the back corner here, but I'm going to single click on this back corner, move my mouse and tap the control key. And I'm going to create a copy of this slider over here by clicking again, right? So we use the move tool in order to create that copy. Well, now notice how if I come in here and edit one of these, the other one is going to adjust along with it, right? So anytime you have something in your model that's going to repeat and you might have to edit it um, again later, what you can do is you can make it a component so that you don't have to re-edit it if you decide to change your window style across the whole thing or anything like that. But what I like to do inside of this component is I like to take this frame. So notice I'm inside of the component. I like to take the frame, select it using a selection box and then right click and make it a group right here. So now what I have is I have a slider component and within the component, I have a group for the frame. Well, then I'm also going to come in here with the rectangle tool, tap the R key and find the midpoint right here. And I'm going to draw a rectangle from here to here. And then you can also double click on that, right click on it and group it as well. But now I have basically two groups inside of a component. I have a frame group and I have a glass group. Well, now we just want to activate the materials tool and we just want to go into our browse function and we're just going to go to colors and we're going to pick kind of a darker color. So maybe this dark gray right here and I'm going to apply that to my outside window frame and also my inside frame. But notice how right now, if I do this to the whole object right here, it's going to apply this darker material to the frame and the face. What I want to do instead is I want to double click into this object. And now I want to apply this gray here to just the frame group we created. Well, we also have a group on the inside and I want to go find a glass material We'll pick maybe this translucent glass gray and we'll apply it to this window right here. Well, now I have a window on the exterior and what I'm going to do, because these windows are all the same size for this example, is I want to reuse this. But before I do it, what I have is I have three pieces in here. I have a frame and then I have the two sliders. Well, I want to take all of those and I'm going to measure my window just to remember how big this opening is. So I think it's four foot by four foot. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all three of these, right click and make them a component. And I'm going to call this window dash four foot by four foot. And I'm going to click on create. Well, now what I can do is I can use the move tool in order to copy this and reuse the same window over and over again, because these are the same size instead of me having to remodel it over and over again. So to do that, you're going to select the object tap the M key and you're going to mouse over this corner. Now, when you mouse over this corner, you're going to single click and move your mouse. But remember, you want to tap the control key in order to activate the move tool in copy mode, right? So now I can tap the control key again, make another copy, and then I'm going to tap the control key and I'm just going to keep copying these. Now for this one, what I want to do is I want to rotate it. And there's two ways that you can do that. You could mouse over the top of it and use this little like cross right here and single click. The only problem with that, um, it's not a bad way of doing that because you don't have to activate another tool. You would just have to activate the move tool again in order to uh, put it in place. You could also tap the Q key to activate the rotate tool. And I'm just going to tap the up arrow key and mouse over the corner, single click, single click, and then move my mouse in order to place this. So I lock this to the blue axis. I single click to set a base point. I clicked again to set a target point, And then I finally clicked again 
in order to set this in place. But now it's just a question of using the move tool in copy mode right here in order to copy this into all of my window openings like this. So now I have windows in my model. Now let's go in and let's model some doors. And so for our doors, what we want to do is we want to start with a frame again. So in this case, we'll use the rectangle tool and mouse over this corner. And I'm just going to single click, move my mouse up and click again. Now in this case, what I like to do with doors, because I don't want to offset them in on all four sides, um, like I do with windows. What I want to do instead is I want to single click, do a shift click, and a shift click, and I've selected these three edges. Well, with those three edges active, what I can do is I can tap the F key to offset this and offset it in. Well, notice how because I didn't select the bottom edge, it's not offsetting from the bottom, it's only offsetting from the sides. And so in this case, I'm gonna type in a value of two, and hit the enter key right here. And then I'll single click in here, and actually what I like to do is I like to select this edge at the bottom and delete that out. When I do that, it removes the um, face that's in here because it's no longer three or more coplanar closed edges. So instead of erasing this and leaving that extra line here, I just erase out that line and that deletes the face. But now I'm gonna do the same thing we did at the window frame where I'm gonna tap the P key, single click, and move my mouse, and I'm just gonna push pull this to the back side or the back wall right here. Well now we're gonna do the same thing we did before. Where we're gonna select this, right click, and we're going to make it a group, All right? So that's our door frame. Well, now we wanna add our door leaf. And so in the case of our door leaf, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna orbit around by clicking and holding the middle mouse button, and I'm going to draw a rectangle on the back side right here. And then I'll hit the space key to turn that tool off and I'll orbit back. Well, in this case, I assume my door is gonna be one and three eighths inches thick. So I'm just going to push pull. So I'm gonna tap P, single click, and then type in one space three slash eight for one and three eighths. And I'm gonna hit the enter key. So now I've got a door leaf in there. Well, I just need to select that door leaf without selecting the frame. So there's two ways you can do that. You can either just click and drag a box around this and just make sure you don't have the full frame inside of it. Or you could also triple click on this object and that'll select basically the face that you're triple clicking on and all the connected edges. But I'm just gonna right click and I'm gonna make this a group. And so now we've got the door in there, we can go apply our materials. So in this case, we're gonna go back into our colors and what I really want to do is I want to tap the B key, which is the paint bucket tool, and I want to hold or tap the Alt key, and I just want to move over this object right here to sample this metal material. Then I'll move my mouse back, and I'll click on this frame right here in order to apply that material. So all I did is tap B, tap Alt, and click in order to sample this, and then I applied the material right here. And then now what I'm going to do so I'm going to go down into my woods and I'm going to apply maybe this wood veneer 01 to this door right here. So now we've got this door in here. We're just going to right click. We're going to make it a component and we'll call this door dash three foot by seven foot and click on create. So now this door is also a component. And what I can do is I can use the move tool in copy mode in order to copy it over here, over here, Etc. So remember, that's select the door, tap M, move over the corner, and then tap control. And remember that you can orbit with tools active by clicking and holding your middle mouse button. So you can orbit, then move, move your mouse over here in order to place this on the corner. Well, then we'll do the same thing we did at that window. We'll, we'll tap key, tap the up arrow key to lock this to the blue axis. We'll single click, we'll select this point, right here, then we'll move our mouse and we'll place it right here. So now we have a door and a frame component. And I can just do this consistently using the move tool in copy mode. I can just copy this, copy this, copy this. Now, what's a little bit weird about this is we put this first door in a thicker wall, right? So now if I place these doors over here, notice how the frame is too thick. Well, that's not a problem because what we can do is we can actually select these doors 
So I'm just going to do a shift click in order to select them. And these doors are going to be different than this door. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to make these unique. Well, as soon as I made them unique, I broke the link between this door and these doors and now made these copies of um, a different instance. So what that means is that means that now I can double click in here. I can double click on the frame and I can push pull this so that it aligns with this wall right here. So I basically made the frame thinner, right? And notice how that didn't adjust this one because it's now a different version of that component, but these all changed. So any edits I make to this door will also be reflected across these doors because these are copies of a component. Well, then I would just take this and I would just move it over and align it right here like this. So I'm going to do that one more time or actually, yeah, I'll do that one more time. So I'll copy this door into this wall. And then for this door, I will use the move tool in copy mode and copy it over here to the back wall because this one's in an exterior wall that's a little bit thicker. So now I have doors in the front and the back. Now, the only thing about this one is it's backwards, right? This door is going to open in, not out. So what I can do is I can activate the flip tool over here. If you don't see the flip tool, you can just click on the little triple dots in order to see a larger tool set. But we're going to click on flip. And in this case, I need to flip this door. And it looks like it's going to want me to flip it over a face because I can't see the red that's in here. So I'm just going to single click and then we'll just slide it back using the move tool right here. So now we have doors, frames, and windows inside of our model. Okay, so using the component functionality is really powerful because if you ever need to adjust something, instead of having to do it multiple times, you just wanna use the same instances of that component. So it's something you should really get familiar with because it's gonna save you a ton of time in the future. Now, if you do have any questions about anything we talked about, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.